how to take out your catalytic converter out the top. Hello guys, and welcome back to channel. Today we're gonna install a downpipe on Corey's B8A4. We're also going to do a quick walk around video, give it a little update of what we've done to it and what the future plans are for it. And thirdly, we are going to check on the forged diverter valve. Three weeks ago, he got an odd code that populated for mechanical failure of the diverter valve. I think we just need to put the larger spring in it and it had the code hasn't came back and that was three four weeks ago so we're going to put the heavier spring in there and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that with it all on the car so let's get into this and let's do it all right hopefully my camera don't die here so this is the downpipe that we got it is a catless downpipe. We got it from DNA Motoring. I don't like these gaskets, but we're going to install them for the time being. Uh, we're not gonna use the turbo side one. We're gonna use the old turbo side one. I'll show you guys how we're gonna recycle that one. So the only one that we're really gonna use is the one on the downpipe to midpipe. Um, definitely gonna use all this hardware. And then we're gonna, while we're underneath it there, we are going to change out the spring. I guess that's the only spring. So we're going to put the heavier spring in. The downpipe's right there, and we got to go down there. So let's get this thing jacked up and get it to it. That low profile Harbor Freight. Oh, get right up on that subframe right there. I'm sure somebody's not gonna like this. All right, so Corey's car has a few other little goodies and I said in the beginning of this video I would go over what we have on his car at this moment. Um, and in the first three months, what did we put on here? We put on the CTS Turbo PCV valve, yep. which is all this. There's a video on that if you want to. In case you're wondering what it actually takes out, it's all that. That's yeah. nasty. It's like chocolate milk. Um, first mod he ever did to this car was a ECS tuning dipstick. Best mod ever. Um, because there is no dipstick on this car, you have to use the MMI screen inside the car and it sucks and at half the time it don't work. Mine still works. Yours does still work. <laughs> uh, he put this engine cold air intake on it, which is smog legal. Yeah. And we put this forged diverter valve, which is up underneath the car. I'll just pop a picture of it. Um, I'll put links in the description below to all of this stuff. Uh, this is, that's cool. Do you want to tell them what that is? A little dipstick for it. So you can check. We got the car up on jack stands now using the pinch welds. Once again, trusting my life to chi the Chinese with their Harbor Freight jack stands. Put it on the pinch weld, goes right there. Um, yeah, I, in the last few times we've worked on this, it was how simple of tools you could get away with. So this is what we're going to start with as far as the amount of tools. Um, I do this more so because this is what most consumers are able to easily get their hands on. Now I run a shop. I used to run a shop for about eight years and all I did was German cars, nothing else. I mean, Occasionally I would do a school bus or something, but other than that, nothing much. It was working for a bunch of car dealers. I got all the shit that we're gonna need as far as specialty tools if we come across it. But the goal is, is so that somebody like Corey, who works at, for a tech company, can get these his dad's Stanley tool set and put his eBay special downpipe on. Cause this stuff isn't hard. None of this stuff's hard guys. It's all nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts. We're gonna take this out, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to actually take both of those out because we need to take the O2 sensors out. Yeah. Um, I do know we're going to have to get a couple specialty uh, ratchets, but I think I've got one, once again, that I got at Harbor Freight that might do the job to uh, make some odd twisties. So let's do it. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. For All, right. Sure. All right, before we get too far into this, I like to use PB Blaster. Give your bolts a little squirt, a little squirt. 
it. We're just going at it. There we go. Yeah, it's probably a little bit too much. More the merrier. All right, so here's the first bolts we got to take out. They're down here. There's one there, one there, and one on the back side. So, long reach wrenches for life, man, here. Quarter inch ratchet on in here. Uh, I already got one off from right there. We're gonna go ahead and break this one loose. I can't hold the camera and break it loose, so you guys are kind of like SOL here for watching me do this, but at least you got an idea of what I've got in there. Um, whenever you use a ratchet with a swivel handle or a handle like this that goes up and down, I always recommend trying to put another hand on the head of the ratchet so you keep it square on the bolt and not trying to twist it off at an odd angle. That really prevents you from rounding the bolt head off because it does happen, especially on exhaust bolts. They heat cycle nonstop, causes oxidation, which means they rust twice as fast. So I'm going to get that off after, and I'm going to set this camera down. All right, so... That bolt we were just working on, exactly what I thought was gonna happen, happened. The bolt broke off. Corey is kind of freaking out, but it's not the end of the world. This is what happened, the bolt broke, no big deal. Pro tip here, you get a bolt stuck in there, take it, set it on the ground, get a hammer. Popped right out, no big deal. So luckily for us, the kit that we got came with new bolts. Um, somebody over in China predicted that the studs would break. Thank you, whoever that little Asian kid is over there. We got new bolts, so I'm not really worried about the broken one. So. All right, so we're, we are underneath the car again. And I apologize if I scream a little bit here and there, but Corey's got like a 52 inch long extension, 12 millimeter midwell socket. And it goes from there all the way up to here. And we're gonna try to get that bolt loose. So, yeah, we'll just go with this one. Lefty, loosey, righty, tight. Ah! Oh, did it just come off? Once again, if it broke, I'm not stressing it. Let's go see what happened, because I can't tell. Hey, guess what? It broke too. It broke too. Yeah. But guess what? What? It's free now, yeah. Well, let's use those bolts that came with. I didn't know it came with bolts. I'm not stressing oh, it now. Don't show my belly. Yeah. I'm pretty pumped. So the last one we gotta get to is the one on the bottom. All right. These first two bolts here are gonna be really easy. Just a 15 millimeter long reach ratcheting wrench. This is a gear wrench one. Uh, once again, I'll make sure to put descriptions in the comments below for as much of this stuff as I can find so you guys can buy it or at least have a relative idea of where to get this. I'm trying to keep it simple for you. Kiss method, keep it simple, stupid. So take the top bolts off first on this one and then you'll have a little bit more room. There's two of them. This little tray right here works really big wonders for holding things. Uh, now we gotta get to the bottom one, which is underneath there. The back bolt, it's gonna be kind of funky. This is what I've got here. I've got a U-joint, a swiveling 15 millimeter socket. I've got a six inch basic straight extension, and I've got this Harbor Freight, I don't know what you call it, but it's cheap, it's dirty, I love it. It's got a three eighths on this end, it's got a quarter inch on this end, and it's got locking attachments. So when you get in a weird spot, don't come off. I want to say this is like $14. Can't buy one of these on the snap-on truck, or as my father-in-law would say, strap-on truck. Their shit works, man. I don't care what anybody says. All right, let's get back to it. So the way I went about this, I came in back in here, in this area. Your bolt back up underneath there. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Your bolt is back there, all right? Wrap your fingers around it and be steady. Guide that swivel right up on that bolt. Now this is where it gets fun. Grab the shaft with one hand, keep it straight, and slowly walk it backwards. We got ours loose already, so we kind of cheated. All right, this is one of those moments where this will do the job, but it's not the right tool for the job. So we need to take this O2 sensor out that's right here right there plugs up here to do this plug what I like to do is take a flat blade screwdriver or in this case a Phillips screwdriver once again not the right tool for a job but it'll do it and you just pull it back just a little bit you're gonna hear it go click done no broken clip no broken connector right out sweet and simple um, like I said we've already loosened this kind of so it's a 7 8 um, I know it's German so why isn't it metric I have no idea but 
we've already loosened this up some, so there you go. And just spin it out. Probably should have done that in the beginning. There's your O2 sensor. All right, time for an update, guys. So I'm having a bit of a problem. I can't get to the bottom bolt on the downpipe. The one, if we were to draw for holes, it would be turbocharger. I'll just show you. So the downpipe sits in the car like that. That bolt right there is giving me a little bit of trouble as far as getting to it. So I'm gonna get on my phone, uh, get on YouTube, get on Google, and do a little bit of quick research and figure out what I'm missing here. Why can't I figure this out? So we'll be back with you as soon as we find out. All right, we're back. So I found a video on YouTube of this gentleman right here. I found this guy, the Blacklist Builds. He says to use a straight extension with a 15 millimeter. All right, after watching him and the guy on YouTube, I like his method, but I don't like his method. So this is what we have just test fitted in the car, and we're gonna try to do this. So cross our fingers. Here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this really long extension and slide it up into that little hole right there. And most of it's gonna rotate and fall over. Like that. Right. Then we're gonna get up into this hole right there and we're gonna find the other end of that socket. Oof. It might have came off the socket. What? Yeah, this thing's with the shit up here now. Alright, we're gonna get this bolt out and then we'll come back to it after we got all the way out. Alright, so that bolt's out. Definitely it's all the way loose. Um, that O2 sensor is still in there. We're gonna leave it in there for right now just because we don't got the tools with us to do it We do own them. They make an O2 socket for it. Uh, you can use a 7 8 inch wrench I've seen people use crescent wrenches don't recommend it because depending on which way you put the leverage on the crescent wrench It ends up loosening and stripping things off. So it's just a bad idea out with the old in with the new like Corey says let's go now we're going to go all the way back there and take off the mid pipe there's two 13s to back i'll show you how those come off so you got these two bolts right here they're very rusty we didn't spray them kind of forgot so odds are these are going to break no matter what um this is a pretty poor design i feel like from the manufacturer i love you audi but i don't like these slip joints See if we can get these things off, shall we? No, oh, that one came loose. Yeah, look at that. So there's only two of them? Yeah, there's only two of them. There's one. Uh, Audi Jeep. Right, let's see if this one. Oh my goodness. Wow. Just be able to give this a little wiggle here, and that should come off. And there's the mid pipe. Now the downpipe, we gotta disconnect the O2 sensor, but other than that, the downpipe's ready to come out, I feel too. So we're gonna disconnect that O2 sensor up there and take out this one bolt that's right here that is holding everything in. Another, this is the exhaust mount that's right there. So we're just gonna take it out. It's a 14 or a 15, I believe, that goes right into the side of the block here, into the side of transmission. So we'll get that out. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the upstream O2, downstream O2 sensor, it's right down there. We're gonna leave it hooked up to the catalytic converter and um, we're gonna follow the wire. It goes, this wire comes over to this harness. The plug is right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Uh, oh yeah, now I see it. Yeah, there's another zip tie right there, so we need to cut that one. And there we go. All right, so we watched this guy do this, and supposedly it comes right up and out the top. So we're going to spin it around and see if we can figure out the right combination right to the lock. Good morning, everybody. Today is day two. Yesterday was a really big old mess of things that happened after 4 o'clock. Brother-in-law decided to roll his pickup truck. My father-in-law lit the big old bonfire that we have out at our farm. This is where we're pretty much at. The cat is stuck right there. 
But before we can do that, we gotta get this other O2 sensor loose. So that's what we're gonna get into and uh, try to wiggle it out. Yeah. Get a new one in. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna fondle it. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we got it loose. There it is. Sweet. Right, let's get. There's the O2 sensor downstream. Check. <clears throat> All right, well, we're fighting coming out the bottom. It doesn't look, it looks like it's gonna keep hitting on the transfer case of the like transmission like where the front axles would be so we're gonna try this coming up the top and see if this works if it doesn't work it is what it is if it does work fantastic the internet said that you just gotta twist yeah oh shit this is gonna come out all right, so we move the intake out of the way, as you can see. Nothing too much. One bolt, one hose clamp here. Zip. One nut there. Engine intake just pulls up, slides out of the way. And this should come out now. That's oh, there. We got it. There it is. You, how to take out your catalytic converter out the top. Oh yeah, key out the top. And the new one ought to be a lot let's, easier to put in. Yeah, let's put this guy in. Can you compare the difference here? I mean, 50% cheaper, 5% less effective exactly. than buying a $900 downpipe. It's up to them to make that decision, though. Hey, maybe some people want that 5% extra. But I can make 5% up in methyl nitrous. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get this guy uh, back in, shall we? Yes. Alright. Alright guys, so before we get too far into this, I know somebody's gonna dog on the fact that it's an eBay downpipe, so on and so forth. And here's the gaskets that I want to point out that do come with that give these downpipes I feel a bad name. The metal is fine, alright? Yeah, you're I would cut that end off right there and put a V-band flange on it when we do the rest of his exhaust. But that's here nor there. This side is a really, really thick flange. And it's got a wide margin on the side here. So I don't think this is ever going to be a problem. But what would be a problem is these gaskets. They're like lead-filled cardboard. They blow out all the time. I mean, you can see this one's already cracking right there. So, and I would not use these. I, I wouldn't use these at all. Even if you decide to reuse the factory ones, like what we're going to do, um, you need to clean them off some, get some of the crap off of them. And then we're going to use the secret ingredient. You go into your local AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts, and they got this stuff called Copper Spray Gasket. It's a high temp sealant. It's specifically made for like head gaskets. We're going to spray this directly onto here. And what that's going to do is give it a like a tacky surface and kind of fill in the voids. And if you see, Corey's up here. He's just got some 220 sandpaper and he's just cleaning these off and trying to scuff them up as best we can. I need that paper. I'm going to use it as something to spray on so I don't spray your blocks. So what we're going to do is just take this and then shake this up a little bit and spray it on like spray paint. It's still kind of tacky. So we're going to go ahead, give that to him and we'll take these and start going and installing this stuff. So let's go. So first things first, we're gonna take the downpipe gasket and stick it back in there. And now we'll put the downpipe in. You wanna to try to slide that in there, Corey? Flip it around. Might have to do a little rotate. Oh, there you go, there you go. You got it? Really close. All right. That is odd. All right, first problem with the eBay downpipe. It's a little odd on the angle. So we're gonna shut this off for a second and see what's going on here. All right, there it is. It is installed. I'm gonna tell you guys flat out, we did take, here's, here's the thing. It fits. I know you're seeing the hammer. We took this hammer and just 
Loved on it right there, and it slid right up over the bolts. On it right there. The bolt holes are a little tight. You could probably take a file to them, round them out a little bit more. It would probably help fantastically. But that's the tool we had for this job. 5% more efficient and probably fits a lot better. But hey, that was less than $100, wasn't it? Ooh, there is something else here I'm not liking. I don't think that O2 sensor is going to fit in there. Yeah. It's farther back and it tips up. We're going to have to change it. We can't leave it that way. All right. All right, so while we're waiting on Paige to get back, because we're going to have to run to the farm, not to the farm, but to the house and do a little modification to the downpipe and the midpipe, Corey's going to change his oil. All right, best tool in the world to take an oil filter off right there. Don't forget to lube your seal, people. All right, so here's what's going on, guys. This bong is too close to the manifold, so we're moving the bong back there. Pretty sweet and simple. Drill the hole. We're making eBay better one part at a time. All, all the penetration right there. All of it. Yep, that's good. That's all we yeah, needed. Damn, you're good at that. It looks just like what they had. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, the wells maybe not. Yeah, but who cares? Yeah. I'm going for function, not looks. All right, now we got to do is uh, knock all these studs out here real quick, God, and we're going to be done. So we're going to do that real quick while that's cooling down, and we're going to watch um, a little whatever is playing. Fuck, I don't know, dude. Yeah. This dude's rich. He had it's still, it's... A Lamborghini. I mean, the scratch he had, it was like... It's just so <gasps> oh, this is Rob Dom. This is Rob Dom. He's building a four rotor. Yeah. This thing is just insane. This is the same type of coolant pump we're going to run on the cobalt right there. That one right there. All right, let's get back to work. Enough watching TV. All right, back to work. Downpipe right here from eBay. It fits. Physically, it fits. From a product review standpoint, this hole right here is a little too tight so we did sorry that hole is a little tight you can actually see where it was rubbing and along with that one no big deal that wasn't the end of the world to me it went on um, but this this bong is way too close to the way too close to the manifold right here so what we did was we brought it back and down so it's going to face a little bit more towards the tower now so you can see how that's going to put it away from it so we should be good there also we had to get some smaller bolts we went with 516 and some lock nuts from uh, home depot because the bolts that come with it do not fit this flange at all now granted this does have studs in it but our studs broke so we're not using them we had to knock them out it is what it is uh it's going to get the job done eventually we're going to go to V-band connections because we're going to delete all of that and take this out again and put a V-band right on that end, right on that end right there. So not super worried about it for the time being. So let's change this battery out on the light here and we're going to get back into it. All right, there we go. It's all ready to go back in. You might ask why put the sensors in now. That would be because it's just going to be simpler. I don't want to stick them in in the car and there's plenty of room here. All right, let's do this. Here we go. All right, time for the special tool. That's done. Now we need our bolts again. Our four 15 millimeter bolts that we have right here. And uh, we'll get these back in. All right, that's in there. You're gonna wanna plug your O2 sensor back up here like this. Plug it in. If you don't know how, I'm sorry. and put it back in the factory clip. Your uh, downstream one, you're just gonna run it back up through here. I really wouldn't stress the zip ties too much. And then your factory connector is right there. Oh. All right, there it is. It is completely installed all the way down. I'm gonna go underneath the car and tighten up a couple last minute things, like the mid pipe. Um, we did notice a new thing with the downpipe. It is a little shorter, maybe like three quarters of an inch too short. 
but the flanges still line up perfectly. So we're just gonna cheat the mid pipe where the mid pipe and the axle pipe come together. And we're just gonna cheat that a little bit and I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do there to make that happen. So hopefully you guys will be able to see this here. So you can see where the old stuff was and now the new stuff. And everything else fits just like it should. So, All right, so the last thing we're going to do before we drop this on the ground is we are going to change out the diverter valve spring. I think I mentioned that earlier in this episode. So we're going to show you guys how to change that spring while it's all still in the car. But before we do that, I'm going to change my battery. The forged diverter valve, we need to put this little spring right here in there. So we're going to do that real quick. We're going to show you guys how to switch the springs out. I mean, there's a diverter valve right there. And what you need to do first is pull that line off of there and then and twist it off. It should come right out. Just pull the spring out. And that's exactly what I thought. That little O-ring in there freaking is ripped. Tripped that light that day? Yeah, that's why I had a vacuum leak. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an O-ring. From where? Hold this for a second. All right, let's see if we can find one of these here. O-ring assortment. All right, so this is what we're gonna go with. I got this uh, O-ring out of the Harbor Freight, out of that Harbor Freight container over there. It's a little bit thicker by a little bit, probably like seven thousandths. I've got a lot of threads in there, so we're gonna go with it, and then we're gonna call, we're gonna call Forge tomorrow morning, so being as it'll be Monday, and see if we can get them to send us another O-ring. This will get him by, and um, we'll just get a new one. I mean, yeah, it's not like. All right, and we're back here out at, we're back again at Corey's house, after running to the farm. We got our O-ring, which you guys have probably already seen me say six times. We got our spring, so let's put this all back in. Slide your spring up in there. Take your cover. Do make sure to orient your vacuum line placement in the right location. And you should be able to just snug this up with your fingers here. There you go, just like that. Take your vacuum line, put it back on, and you're done. All right, real quick, while Corey's dropping the uh, car back down on the ground, I just want to go through the tools that we actually use to put this downpipe in. This is probably more than you actually need, but this is what we ended up using. Um, a couple different things here we have are two different style O2 sockets, and then the third style, a good old wrench, 7H wrench. This one goes down around the O2 sensor socket. You wanna do this one by hand if you can because it will whip the um, wiring because it just goes down in this little slot here. It slides down and over it. This one slides over it and then just grabs onto it and you gotta put a ratchet or an extension and pop it loose. Um, we use this guy here to chase the O2 sensor holes just to clean them out nicely. I did that especially on the eBay downpipe because you can see where it kinda got boogered up at the bottom um, where it recut some stuff. Uh, then we just got an assortment of different style 15s and like an eight mil and a 10 mil to get the intake box off, which you might not need. And a couple other miscellaneous sockets here. Uh, we got several extensions so we could get down in different, different areas of it. And then all the different ratchets and wrenches. So most of this is all like 15, 10, 12. And that was really it. So this is what you need. Um, the most important part of this whole thing was this, this, and this to get to that bottom bolt on the exhaust manifold. But other than that, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Realistically, uh, yesterday, we could have just knocked this all out in one day, but some things happened and we couldn't do it. It was my fault. So, Oh yeah. Okay, so Corey and I did just have a kind of a little epiphany here. We've been thinking about this installation all day and Corey's two cents on this intake is, this thing has fought us a bit. The and downpipe, yes. yeah, the downpipe has fought us going in, in a few different ways. It's on now. It's on. Yeah, it's it's on. installed, we are at the farm, we drove it out here 
scanner died. But his thoughts are, is if you were to actually go and spend, now we spent $40 roughly on this. It was under 100 I promise you. Under 100 I don't get the receipt, but it was under $100. It was super cheap. Okay, so under $100 for this downpipe. Yeah. And if you go on like a reputable site like ECS.com, and were to pick out any number of downpipes that they offer for the 2.0 B8, B8 and a half, you could easily just, this be a drop-in installation. Granted, you're still gonna fight a few things like oh, yeah. the bolt, the back bottom bolt that's gonna fight you. You still run the risk of breaking your studs on your mid pipe. That stuff still could happen. But having to relocate an O2 sensor, having to get a little hammer to nudge the downpipe on because it's a tight fit, things along those lines, they wouldn't exist. Well, and the short, and it was short. Yes. Like a little bit. Like this much. It was, it, was gonna... it was just a little short. And we were able to cheat the slide clamp on the back. Yeah. But other than that, this has been a really easy installation. Realistically, I would give this about an eight hour job at time for a DIYist. Um, you can use very minimal tools. The only real tools you need, you can rent from uh, AutoZone to pick up. And we didn't obviously need to rent them, but you can rent them. I want to say it's like $38 and you get your money right back. So other than that, and don't turn your car on, otherwise you're gonna need a scanner, scan tool to remove it. Yeah, and you don't have to use a VADCOM to clear the codes, just for the record, just saying. So we're gonna go take this thing for a ride now that it's all clear, and we'll let you guys know how it goes. So let's go do it. All right. In the rain. In the rain, oh. picked up a little bit. Well, it is wet outside. Tell a difference, yeah. We'll yeah. have to take it out when it's dry. I yeah. really know when it's dry. Definitely. I promise you, I'll be able to tell you when it's um, dry. I think my biggest thing that I've noticed that's different is throttle response. It's nuts. The throttle response is a lot better, which is pretty typical for what we did. We put a downpipe on it, which removes a lot of the restriction from the catalyst, uh, from the cat being there, causing the turbocharger to not be able to spool as fast. So pretty happy overall with this and yeah it was a pain in the ass but i'm glad we got it done now yeah. it's totally worth it yep. we stuck with it so here's my outro recommendations on this if you were to do this awesome save the money get the 40 dollars ebay downpipe and if you got a welder or have a friend with a welder you're gonna have to move the bong oh for sure yeah it's got a couple nuances that you don't have to deal with but it's definitely better than spending five six seven eight hundred dollars um, for a piece of exhaust tube. However, if you don't, I would definitely recommend with something a little bit more well-known brands-wise and has more direct fit or better quality yeah, exactly. reviews overall. Uh, I like this product. I'm about cheap and efficiency. So some people are about the name on it. But you can also correct it to make it work yeah. for the application where some people couldn't do that probably true we can we definitely know how to make ebay better one part at a time <laughs> so on that bombshell like jeremy clarkson always says we'll see you next time guys peace you got it you gonna show them say hi Fix it. <laughs>